Hello, I'm Anne Kerr. Welcome to my art studio. Today we're going to have a look at the rigger brush and other brushes that are very much like the rigger brush that you can use in exactly the same way. I'll show you how to load the brush and how to use it. So, are you ready? Those of you that have watched some of my other videos will know that these, together with my little rigger, are the brushes that I use probably 90% of the time. So, let's have a look at the little rigger and see what it can do for us. Now the way a rigger brush differs from an ordinary round brush is that it has very long very long hairs and I'll show you the advantage of those long hairs in a moment when I show you how it works. However, there are different kinds of brushes that look very much like a river, uh, um, a river, that look very much like a, riv a rigger, but they're called by a different name. For example, this one is a script liner. This one is a half rigger. It's getting a little bit confusing, isn't it? So I think the margin between the um, categories of these brushes is beginning to blur slightly. And I think most people now classify all these long haired brushes as riggers. They may not be called that on the actual handle of the brush, but for all intents and purposes, they are and they work like a rigger. So I wouldn't be too worried about what the brush is called because if you're choosing one, what you want to look for and what you want to, to decide on is the, the actual length of the hairs because they do vary. Let me show you some different ones. Now I would actually classify all these as riggers. But they're not all called riggers if you look at the, at the name on the handle. So to keep things really simple, we'll classify them as riggers. Now the reason they have these very long hairs is that they hold an enormous amount of paint. And in a moment when, we, when I demonstrate them for you, you can see what I mean. Now if you're choosing a rigger, bar, um, a, a rigger brush, don't always go by the number that's on the brush because they vary according to manufacturers. For example, this one is a size 2 and so is that one. But they're made by different companies and they are totally different sizes and yet they're both called a size 2. So. Choose it for the look of it, not for the number that's written on the handle. Now, like any other brush, you can get rigger brushes, or whatever they are called, in all different kinds of hair. You can get them as synthetics, you can get them as a mix of synthetic and natural hair, or you can get them as all natural hairs. And that is entirely up to you. The ones with the natural hair are very very soft and they don't have a lot of spring to them just like any other paintbrush that's made of natural hair and the ones that are that are made of synthetic hair have a bit of spring to them and again it's personal choice as to whether you like a very soft brush or whether you like one with a bit of spring if you have a very gentle touch with your painting you might love the natural hair brushes if you're a little bit more firm with your brushes and a little bit more heavy handed like I am, then you might prefer the brush which is synthetic and has a bit of spring to it. But you have to try them out to see which one is best for you. Now there is another brush <laughs> which I don't know why I bought this. I was, as you've probably seen if you've watched my video on 
watercolour brushes and, and choosing brushes, you will know that I have got an enormous collection of brushes, 95% of which I never use. They are a total waste of money. And as far as I'm concerned, this is one of them. Now, I don't want people shouting at me saying, oh, I've got one of those and it's fantastic, etc., etc. Yes, okay, if you love it, then that's absolutely fine. But for me, this is called a reservoir brush because it's got, it's, it's really a round brush with a rigger brush in the middle of it. So this is, um, this is a sort of a reservoir for holding paint. So it'll hold a big amount of paint, which then runs down into this part of the brush and you can go on painting for a long, long time without running out of, out of paint. Well, I don't know any time when I would need to paint for as long as that without reloading. So for me, this brush doesn't do anything that an ordinary little rigger won't do for me. Because all I really use is the little pointed bit at the end. I'm not bothered about holding masses and masses of water to go on painting for ages. It doesn't come into my repertoire. But, as, I, as I've said before, horses for courses. If you love them, well, that's fine. But this doesn't do anything for me that a rigger brush can't do. I just thought I'd show it to you. By the way, I heard a lovely name for these the other days. Uh, the other day, it was called a pregnant round. <laughs> how, how great is that? A pregnant round. <laughs> this one is actually called an extended point. I've also heard them called reservoir brushes. But I just thought I'd show that to you. You see a lot of people doing tree branches and things with rigger brushes and it's absolutely fantastic for that. But it's not the only thing that a rigger brush will do. Let me show you. Now here I've got some old paint left over from a painting so we'll just use up some of that. I'm not into wasting paint. So I'll take my little spray bottle and we'll just activate those. Now when you want to use your rigger brush, don't mix up your paint with your rigger brush because you'll be there forever trying to get a nice puddle of paint. Because the little brush is so little, you will wear your brush out trying to mix a nice big area of paint. So always keep an old brush handy and mix up your paint with your old brush. Now when you're using a rigger brush, you need the paint to be of a certain consistency, not too dry, because if it's too dry, the paint will break on the paper and you won't get a lovely continuous line. So we'll just, I think you can see that mix there, yes. I'm just looking up at the camera to make sure you can see that. Okay, so there's my mix. I think that's about right. And if I tip my palette up, you can see that that's only just moving on the palette. So it's quite concentrated. So I'll make my rigger brush wet. Take off the excess water because you don't want to add any more to what you've just done. Now the way to load a rigger brush is not to just dip it in the paint like that. Because the idea of these long hairs is to hold a lot of paint. So you roll your brush in the paint. Literally roll it round and round in the paint and then just touch the end of the brush to bring it back to a point. And then you can go on painting for quite a long time. You see how much, how much paint that rigger brush holds. And I still haven't run out. Just running out now. Now that's why I said that that other little brush, which I can't actually find at the moment, with the, uh, the pregnant round. <laughs> oh, here it is. 
That's why, to me, I would never make use of this, because I can't think of any time when I would want to go on painting for any longer than that at any one moment. But, you know, horses for courses, as we say. So back to the paint. You roll your brush in the paint and then just touch the end of it just to bring it back to a point. Now if you're painting things like hair on animals or hair on people or grasses or anything that grows you will have a root and a tip. Now the root of anything that grows is always wider than the actual tip. For example a hair or some grass. So if you use your brush and you start at the base of the grass or the hair and you flick upwards, can you see how that's much wider than that? Now if I did it the other way around, I started at the top and I flicked downwards, the root of my grass would be very narrow or the root of my hair would be very narrow and the top would be square. So if that's a hair on an animal, it looks as though the animal's been to the hairdressers and had a haircut, because the top is flat and square. So if you're painting anything that grows, whether it's hair, fur, grass, tree branches, tree trunks, always start at the root and go upwards. Now the way you hold your brush is also important because if I rest my brush on the paper and I hold it right down here near the, uh, near the ferrule, I have a lot of control over where that line is going. My hand is anchored to the paper. Whereas if you take your hand off the paper, let me just reload roll my brush and touch the tip. If I take my hand off the paper and I hold my, my brush a little bit further up the handle, I can flick. You see? And that is the wonderful way to paint hairs or grasses. It's very difficult to flick when your hand is anchored, anchored to, the, to the paper. Much more difficult. Take your hand off the paper, move your hand up the handle and flick away from you. If you watch my wrist, I'm actually flicking my wrist. Now, another way that I um, use my rigger brush, and it's one of the ways, because I'm a, basically a landscape painter, it's one of the ways I find really, really useful. I hold my brush in what I call the dry brush position, which is four fingers on one side and my thumb on the other. And I put my brush parallel to the paper and I just push upwards like this. Now this works better on rougher paper, and I'll show you that. But just to give you the idea, it's what we call a dry brush technique. There's very, very little paint on that brush. Let's load it up again. Dab a little bit of it off on my tissue. Hold the brush parallel to the paper, not using the tip, you're using the whole length of the bristles and just slide your brush along like that. And this is wonderful for doing foreground texture. Look, how good is that? And then you could load up again. Now do it properly, Anne, don't rush. <laughs> load up again, just touch the end. Go back to the normal hold, and then you could flick in some grasses. Now how easy is that? This little brush is so versatile. 
This is a piece of rough watercolour paper. Let's do exactly the same thing. Let's load up the brush. Hold it in the dry brush hold. Four fingers one side, thumb the other. Hold it parallel to the paper and push upwards. Can you see the rougher the paper, the more, the more texture you get? In fact, with rougher paper, you probably need even more paint in your brush. So let's reload and go back. Yes, there we are. And all I'm doing is scraping my... I'm not dabbing, I'm scraping my brush along. Go back to the normal hold and flick in some grasses. So you get a different effect if you're using if you're using rough paper than if you're using smoother paper. Now the script liner brush, this is a script liner brush, and this is called a half rigger. Well I don't know about you, but I really can't see much difference in those. Don't worry too much about the name. Just go by the length of the hairs as to the one you, um, that you actually choose. But the idea of a script liner brush was... Whoops, don't do what I've just told you not to do, which is try and mix up paint with your brush. Use an old brush. Let's have a nice red. Use your old brush to mix up your paint. You'll be there forever trying to mix it with this. And you'll wear the point out. I think that's about the right consistency. Yes, it's not quite running on, on, on the palette, so that's, a, that's about right. And We'll soon know if it isn't because the paint will begin to break on the paper. That means it's too dry. So this is a script liner brush which was used for doing script. So um, people would hold, really hold their hand firmly and they would use the brush like that. Now I've never done any calligraphy or script or anything but I'm just sort of showing you the movements that the script liner can do. There we go. But I really, really can't tell the difference between what they call a half rigger and what they call a script liner. Let's try and do that with what they call the half rigger. Now, I've never tried this before, so forgive me if it is a disaster. I'm very used to disasters. I have plenty of them. <laughs> OK, let's see if I can do exactly the same thing with this as I can do with the script liner. And the answer is yes. So I really can't notice much difference. There's a difference in the name, but for what it actually will do, I think they're very, very similar. See what I mean? All right. Half rigger, script liner. As far as I'm concerned, they're exactly the same. Okay, let's, let's have a look at the ubiquitous te uh, tree branches. They are everywhere. Certainly are in my paintings. I love painting trees. Now, I'm loading up my brush. I'm just adding a little bit of water because it's beginning to dry out slightly. I'm just checking on the camera that, yes, that's still in view. So, I'm just rolling my brush 
in the paint and then I'm, I'm holding it a little way up the handle just touch the end on the palette and always paint, paint <laughs> start again always paint tree branches or anything that grows in the direction that it grows let's push that a little bit to one side so start at the root or start at the end of the branch and paint upwards. So if I press hard, I get a thicker line. And if I release the pressure, I get a thinner line. And that's exactly what a branch will do. Thick at the bottom where it joins the main trunk and narrow at the top. And always paint away from you. It's very difficult to paint towards you, pulling towards your body and get a nice flowing line like that. And if you do little jerks as you paint, you'll get, you'll, you'll get little nodules like that as you would do on the branch of a tree. How clever is that? Can you see those little wispy ends? Now you couldn't get those wispy ends if you started at this end and painted downwards. You get square ends like we had up here. Do you remember we said the animal had had a haircut? <laughs> so let's... Look where my brush finished up. As I flicked the end, I didn't stop at the end of the, at the, end of the twig. I let my brush continue on. Let's do a few more of those. Look where my brush is finished up. Didn't finish up there, finished up over here somewhere. Roll my brush again, touch the end. And you could put in as few or as many and make them as wriggly and twisted as you want to, or you can make them smooth. Not that many branches are smooth. Most of them have wriggles and kinks in them somewhere. See how my, my hand is finishing up well away from the actual end so all these different brushes that I've showed you that go by different names are all very much alike. So they've all got very long hairs and they come to a lovely point. So the way you choose your brush is you choose it by the length of the hair and what the hair is made of. Don't worry too much about what the brush is called and don't go by the number of the brush because as I said, the numbers will vary enormously between manufacturer and manufacturer. One person's size three is another manufacturer's size six. So be a little bit aware of that. I hope this has given you an idea of how to use the rigger. If you'd like more videos like this, then consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell icon, because that lets you know when I upload another video for you. If you've enjoyed this one, then give it a thumbs up Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, there is an artist in everyone. Goodbye for now.